Yo, what's up, YouTube? What it do, man? Okay, my, if you don't get what I'm about to say, my name is Armani. I'm the leader of the Armani production here on YouTube. This is my channel, my debut content tonight. Well, as we start here tonight, I want to basically discuss a couple things. One of them being the... What is my channel going to be about? It's going to be about a lot of things. I'm going to probably go over cooking. I'm probably going to go over wrestling a lot. Wrestling is basically the big thing because, obviously, as you can see with the CM Punk t-shirt, I am a wrestling fan. A true, full-grown, all-around professional wrestling fan. And, quite honestly, I just don't like how the wrestling world is being you know, just being talked about in the IWC nowadays, or even here on YouTube, or even uh, everywhere. So, why have I started this channel? To talk about wrestling? Well, just to give just to give a fair and honest opinion, you know, and a truthful opinion, that is. And, first off, I just want to say on my channel is this. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. I don't care. That's your problem. Seriously. Main reason why I say this is because, you know, on this show, I'm speaking my opinion. You're going to have yours. That's just automatic already. I'm not going to get at you about it. I'm not going to hate you for it. And I just hope and pray to God that you don't hate me for mine. I mean, because quite honestly, I've been a fan since 1993. When I got to see my first match was actually uh, the King's Court versus Doink the Clown and his little, little, little bitty clowns. But anyway, I've seen it all from the Golden Age era because I actually get, got to watch a lot of it. I've also been around the New Generation era a lot. I also got to see the Attitude era. Attitude era is the best era going today. And if anybody doesn't agree with me on that, you're a fucking jackass. I'm sorry. And then there's the draft post era that I saw, and then on top of that, um, we're in our current reality era, which, by the way, my boy CM Punk was the actual leader and the genesis of this whole entire era. Um, I just want to say to him right now, if he if he's watching. Bruh, your career was a success. Stop beating yourself up. You're a good guy, and I hope you do well in the UFC. Right now, who's the big star in the reality era, in your guys' opinion? You can guys, you guys can go down on the list. Right now, I think... I think Seth Rollins is doing pretty damn good. But, I know a lot of people will also say Daniel Bryan... Which, I can also agree, because he's got the biggest popularity going. And, who knows, maybe Roman Reigns might do something crazy. But I know something, my wild card, Dean Ambrose, will probably do something good. But, we'll see what the future brings, you know? As of right now, Seth Rollins is doing a good job, and so is Daniel Bryan. Um, what else am I going to do for a content on my channel? Maybe we'll talk about other stuff like maybe favorite TV shows, maybe favorite books. If you guys want to suggest some books, I'll read some if you want. Um, maybe we'll talk about some wrestling news as well and make fun, maybe. <laughs> um, also, maybe movie reviews and on top of that, maybe we'll talk about some Pokemon if you guys want to talk about that. And future content. Who knows, maybe I'll have more people with me. <laughs> maybe we'll have a talk show, talk wrestling kind of deal. But anyway, I'm not going to be like those other channels out there. I'm going to try to give you guys my fair opinion. There's some of those channels out there that I actually respect and actually like watching on YouTube. And if you guys can find them, take a time to listen. I know some of them are very critical, and I know some of them are very analytical, like myself. But just overall... There's a lot of um, wrestling shows that you guys 
should check out here on YouTube because, you know, a lot of people have good opinions. Um, just now to start off, let's go over one quick thing because tomorrow night at MSG, MSG, a Madison Square Garden, a WWE Network exclusive. In the Go to Hell tour, we're gonna see Brock Lesnar go one on one with that seven foot monster who basically came out of the dungeon of doom. Hell, he dry humped Hulk Hogan and joined up with the Yeti to do this. And basically, he jumped over to WWE when the NWO thought he was nothing. But that man made something big, big of himself, and a lot of people want him to retire, sadly, this day, which I think he shouldn't retire, he should be more part-time, and be an attraction like how Andre was, and that is, THE BIG SHOW, and a lot of people want to be, THE BIG SHOW. Honestly, this match on MSG, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, should be should be a good match to watch. It, it's an attraction because it's Lesnar, and when I look at it, it's Big Show, so it's even more of an attraction to me. And it's probably a seller for MSG. So people, if you're gonna watch that match, I don't really expect too much something too big out of it, but it's something to watch. It helps hypes up Brock for his match with Taker at Hell in a Cell. And his podcast with Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's the Go to Hell tour. What can you say? And as far as Big Show goes, I think it's that's a good challenge. It's a good challenge, but he, but I already know Brock has overcome it. Next, the Steel Cage match for the United States Championship. It will be the Doctor of Thugonauts, John Cena. John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks versus the future known as Seth Rollins. To me, this match should be the show stealer in in some aspect because one, it's the United States title. Cena's made it very relevant now, and he's actually proven to people that he can actually go and actually work. And if you're being ignorant and saying he only has the five moves to do. Oh, Cena learned suplex. That it was super effective. And he's at level 100. You are a very ignorant bastard. I mean, it's funny after a while. But you gotta admit, Cena's been doing a hell of a lot better job this year than he has in previous years. So get your head out of your ass. And as far as Seth Rollins goes... I said it the moment that I heard of Seth Rollins as Tyler Black signing with WWE to be on FCW. That kid is going to be something. He is something today, and he is the main event of today. And I'm going to say this right now. Knowing his work ethic and seeing how Cena's work ethic has been increasingly well lately, I see a very, very intense, very good cage match. By the way, there's also guest appearances by Kane. So, we'll sh we should see something very interesting in that match. And it's for the U.S. title, so just automatically look at it. It should be good, you know? Um, the next match, which I think is going to be the most entertaining match of tomorrow night's um, WWE Network special, is the Dudleys versus the New Day. And it's for the Tag Team Championship, as we all know. But why is the... Honestly, do you know what this Tag Team match is? Do you know what this Tag Team match is? Pun intended from Bully Ray, a.k.a. Bubble Ray Dudley and Devon Dudley. I'm going to just say this right now. This match has... All the qualities of being the most entertaining match. One, it's because you got New Day. New Day. New Day. Yeah, the New Day 
They're hella entertaining already, so you guys should know that already. Um, the Dudleys are gonna try every possible way to put somebody through the table. It's Philly. It's MSG. It's New York, baby. The damn Dudleys are coming home. So, I tell you right now, that match is going to be entertaining. And I know it was a lot disappointing at the last pay-per-view at Night Champions. But I look at that as the beginner of a rivalry. And when a beginner of a rivalry happens, there's usually more to the story after. So, let's just... Let's just enjoy. Shit. I mean, it's the damn Dudleys. And the New Day is hot as hell right now. So why not enjoy? Or watch. You know? Just enjoy. Don't fucking predict. Just enjoy. This is going to be awesome. This is what the Attitude Era was about. It was about not caring who was going to win or who was going to lose. I know a lot of people made predictions then. But more people actually took the time to actually enjoy the show. Um, next up is going to be the most intriguing match of the card. And I say this, I say this a lot, a lot. Kevin Owens is probably the best damn wrestler in WWE right now for a big guy. Probably the most agile, most technical, the most powerful. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it as Kevin Owens is the future of big men right now, and I, I'm actually enjoying his work. <laughs> as a as a heel, maybe even a babyface, I'm going to enjoy Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen's work, because he's done a very good job. Um, but he's going to have to go through a very tough challenge in putting on his Intercontinental title, <laughs> and my hiccup, Intercontinental title on the line. Yes, I've been drinking, everybody. But, Who's he putting the Intercontinental title on the line? Then it's going to become Kevin Owens' biggest test to this day. Well, we all know Kevin Owens started off with a main eventer in John Cena. Tomorrow night, Kevin, M Kevin Owens goes one-on-one -on -one with the one, the only, the incomparable, the... King of Rock and Roller and the Atola. How? The leader of the Jericho Holics, Y to J Chris Jericho. That's right, it's Jericho versus Owens tomorrow night for the Intercontinental Belt. This match is gonna be intriguing, gonna be entertaining. I think this is gonna have some very good good in-ring work, and it's going to be a work of art, so, if you're not down to just watching the, the other three matches, this match it should be the match you want to watch. Also, what's also on the card? Well, for an undercard match, and basically a semi kind of main event, in my opinion, I don't think it's going to be the main event, but it's going to be a good match. And it has top stars, so it's going to be Randy Orton versus Sheamus. And I know a lot of people are like going like, eh, we've already seen it already. The thing is, I think this match and all the other matches that Sheamus is having with Randy Orton is to help Sheamus get over. And most of all, it helps Randy stay relevant because these two guys are two bad dudes and they're going to actually really have good matches against each other. So, I wouldn't hate it as much as some people will. I think it's just ignorant when they do that. But, I think that match is going to be a little bit underrated. But, should be a very good match overall, somewhat. And this is a live event, so it should be fine. should be fine. If not, you guys can talk trash all you want. But, I think these guys are just helping each other build each other up for something special and something big for both of them. Um, then the one match that's making me shake my head and puke all over myself, and that's the nasty and disgusting vomit known as Rusev Machka versus Dolph D. Bag Ziggler! And yes, you heard me right. If you're a fan of Dolph Ziggler, that's your problem. 
I always thought of him as a D-bag because he always came off as a D-bag. I mean, that's just my honest opinion, but I'm not going to deny that he's a great wrestler, and I don't think he, he doesn't deserve a world title, but I just don't like Ziggler. I'm sorry, guys. I just don't like him. I might like him as a person, but as a, as a personality, hell no, I don't. I'm sorry. Him versus Rusev, to me, has been going on for too long for WWE, and really, I already see where the climax is going to happen. If you don't, you're, uh, you're kind of stupid, but overall, I think Rusev versus Ziggler is going to be a okay match. Maybe not the best match on the card, but it'll be an okay match. And Ziggler, if you really want to steal a show... Make people interested in you. And stop trying to please people. Do what you know that does best. Because really, you're making me puke. By just being disgusted with your matches. Because I know you can do better. On top of that, your personality sucks. It's 80s gimmicky, man. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Now, if you're going to say anything about Ziggler being the best, I don't disagree. He's probably one of the better wrestlers out there, but he just sucks as a character, in my opinion. Um, what else we got? Oh, yeah, that was pretty much it from what I saw on the card. But there's going to be appearances by Team Bella, which basically calls themselves the Veteran Divas. Um, no, you're not a veteran. Natalia is more of a veteran than you guys. And really, I think that chick Asuka from NXT, a.k.a. Kana, is a way better wrestler than all of you combined. And I think Sasha Banks could own you guys' asses in a heartbeat. But, and I think Charlotte, as green as she is right now, as young in her career as she is right now, because that's why I think she's flailing a little bit. It's because I think it's just the inexperience overall, and I think they're they're trying to play up to that. But she will also be showing up, Charlotte and the Bellas, and supposedly Paige too. And then on top of that, I think you're also going to see Stardust and Mark Henry. Mark Henry, man, sex. Sexual chocolate. Sexual! <laughs> but, you know, I say this much as far as that goes. MSG should be an interesting night. I uh, hope it's better than what I'm expecting. I hope it stands out. And I hope fans around the world who watch it on the WWE Network enjoy. Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to say this. Not to promote the WWE Network and not to promote WWE and not and not this TNA or Ring of Honor or GFW, whatever you guys like. But honestly, for all you fans out there who hate the WWE Network, just because you hate what they're doing now, if you stop buying the network, if you stopped, you really and you think it's not worth it, that, that's your opinion, but I'm just going to say this much, um, the network is worth the $9.99, I mean, if you don't like the current writing today, you can always go back to the golden eras, like the Attitude Era, which, by the way, was probably one of the best eras, and there's a lot of great matches on the WWE Network that is still out there, and you could just relive over and over again. And one of them, in my opinion, which is one of my favorites, is Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit, Royal Rumble 2001. And, or, was it 2001 or 2000? See, that's how bad my mind is, but anyway, Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit is probably one of the best matches of all time. And if you don't watch that match, or you've never seen that match, you better go check it out because it was really one of the good ones. And then on top of that, you have matches like Stone Cold vs. Rock, 
from all three WrestleManias, I mean, dude, to me, even on the DVD, that's worth 20 bucks. If you have all three of those matches on one DVD, that's 20 bucks in my opinion because the Austin and Rock rivalry was probably the best rivalry WWE has ever seen to this day. And I suggest for all of you who haven't watched the Stone Cold and Rock rivalry, come on, guys. Go If you're a rest, true wrestling fan, watch those rivalries. And you watch. Because if you watch those, you'll understand where I'm coming from. You know? Um... And then on top of that, you have a lot of matches, a lot of matches from WCW, which some of them are actually really good matches. And on and on top of that, there's hidden treasures there that nobody even talks about to this day. I mean, I was watching Fall Brawl '97. No, wait, yeah, '97, where Kevin Nash was going to lead the NWO with Six Pack. Buff Bagwell and Conan against Ric Flair versus, I mean, Ric Flair and, um, Arne, wait, not Arne Anderson, was Benoit, Mongo McMichael, and Kurt Henning in, um, War Games. And basically this match was actually a very high vocal match back in 97 because it, it, it showed the betrayal of Kurt Henning to WCW. But it also sh showed something that nobody ever gets to talk about because, one, a lot of people have a bad rep on Buck Bagwell, but honestly, Fall Brawl 97 was one of his best promos that I've ever seen him do. And it was a combined promo with him, Conan, Six, and Kevin Nash, which, by the way, I suggest y'all go watch. You know? That's one thing. Um, also, the network carries content that cannot be seen on on um, WWE.com, cannot be seen on YouTube, cannot be seen on TV. So, and one of those contents is NXT. If you fucking don't have the WWE Network because you didn't want to watch all the other shit, you're missing out on NXT. And NXT, in my opinion, is worth the $9.99. Hell, it probably... A lot of their shows already is worth more than $9.99, to be honest. Like, take over Brooklyn. That fucking pay-per-view. That pay-per-view, bro, was worth... Honestly, it was worth the pay-per-view of SummerSlam. Just because of how good the matches were. Even the debut of Apollo Crews was a good match. The only match on that card... That kind of was kind of draggy, in my opinion, was Jushin Lager versus Tyler Breeze. But that's because I kind of expect it, because Jushin Thunder Lager, everybody, is in his late 40s, or early 40s, or maybe even his 50s now. So I'm just saying, if you don't watch NXT on the WWE Network, you're missing out, and really, NXT alone is worth $9.99, or even more, so... I suggest that, you know, you guys got to stop being ignorant. And if you really want to watch wrestling and you consider yourself a true wrestling fan and you love the shows, it's a great deal. A very, very great deal. And if everybody thinks I'm just doing this as a plug, no. I've been, ever since the network started, I've kept, I've kept up with a lot of things. Like this week in WWE. I've kept up with NXT. I've been trying to catch up on SmackDown because I work. And I've been also catching up on Raw, too, from the, the year previous where I had to work Mondays every week. And I'm just going to say this much, guys. Pay-per-view-wise, I mean, really, why would you want to spend 72 to 125 bucks? Uh, for something that you can watch on your PlayStation, your tablet, your phone, your TV for $9.99 a month. And it's worth it. It's worth it. But why did Vince McMahon made it worth it? 
one, it makes him more money, and you know, he loves his money. And two, it's because he's he was once one of you guys. He was a fan of the product, and he owned the product. His dad owned the product when he was, when he was a fan. And guess what? He wants to give back. So, for all of you who think this WWE Network isn't worth your time, you really need to get your head out of your ass. Alright, so there you go for tonight. Um, it's been a good it's been a good half an hour talking with y'all. So if you wanna watch my net, my show, that's fine. If you wanna call me a jackass and I'm saying I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm just a mark. Just remember I don't just love WWE, I love TNA, I love GFW, I love Ring of Honor. And I I, I can't wait to see a lot of other great wrestling shows come out, you know. And right now, is you guys want to know what my my take on is, what is the best um, pay, rest, wrestling show ever? Right now, currently, is NXT, because they're actually doing really good work. And it's fresh, it's new. I know a lot of people think Ring of Honor has something to do with it, but there's also NXT fresh talent there, too. So, I suggest, you know, come on. If you're not watching NXT, you're just ignorant and you're cheating yourself. As a wrestling fan. And as a true wrestling fan myself, I think anybody who cheats themselves out of a good show is completely ignorant to the product and don't understand the product as much. And I just want to say this last thing because there's a lot of people who get angry at wrestling and say, It doesn't go my way! <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Just because it doesn't go your way doesn't mean it's going to your way. Because WWE tries to listen to you guys and they want to make a good story for you guys. They want you to have a good time watching the show. It's the same thing with Impact. It's the same thing with Ring of Honor. You know, they're just trying to put on a show and make you more invested in the superstar you love. And a lot of you were in love with Daniel Bryan. And guess what? Even though in WWE didn't really originally have plans for Daniel to become World Heavyweight Champion, they still took the time to invest in it because you guys loved Daniel Bryan. And you made your opinion set heard. So, come on. Don't think they're not listening to you because they are. They're just trying to find ways to make the show better for you. So, there you go. Um, other than that, if you guys just want to, you guys don't get wrestling that much, just remember it's a work all together because it's entertainment. Get that for your fixed skull and stop breaking your DVDs because you, you don't realize what you're breaking could be I eventually collector's item. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I can show you some of my wrestling DVDs that are collector's item right now. But that's that's just my opinion. If you're breaking your DVDs because you don't like a way a pay-per-view ends, you're really an asshole to yourself. Because you just spent money and you wasted it. Um, as far as the wrestling show goes, everything's at work. The storylines are at work. The match and the outcome is at work. But as far as the in-ring ability, the in-ring work that they do, you got to respect it a whole lot because that's a lot of damage to the body. It's the most athletic thing you will ever see for, for any sport right now, and they're doing it yearly. I mean, fuck. Me doing judo for a full year, or two years, or ten years of competing in the club circuit, let me tell you this, a year-round sport really takes a lot of toll on the body, so when they mean sports entertainment, they mean the entertainment part and how the outcome is, yeah, it's a work, but what they actually do is real, it's athletic, and those guys put a lot and a lot of work into it, so please, respect what they do, because they do this for you to entertain you so they can pay for their families, you know, just, 
come on, guys, you gotta show more respect. And you'll find out later on, later on, that some of these guys are actually kind of cool people. Like The Miz, I didn't realize how cool he was until after watching Tough Enough. So, other than that, y'all have a good weekend, and I'll be back with a WWE MSG Network review of the show. And I hope, frick, I not only hope, I know it should, it should be a good show, so. And if you guys want me to also do reviews on TNA or Ring of Honor, I'll watch the whole show just so I can review it if you want. And if you guys have any questions, that's fine. And if you're going to give me hate mail, don't even bother. I'm pretty sure your parents have told you, you have nothing nice to say. Don't say them at all, because you're just going to make a big jackass out of yourself. And take it from me, because I can be a big jackass myself. So, there you go. God bless y'all. Yeah, have a good day.